Let's go to Barbara Sherwood Lawler, geologist, professor at the University of Toronto. She joins us now to talk some more about this. Barbara, thanks for your time today. I know this involves findings from the inside Insight probe. How did it determine that there was water under the surface? Fantastic. The Insight probe was, of course, a mission on Mars between 2018 and 2022. And it's essentially a geophysical, a seismic mission. So it uses all kinds of probes in order to understand the distribution of Mars quakes, the same way we have earthquakes. And by taking a look at that geophysical and seismic information, they can actually infer and model the type of material that those quakes or waves must have passed through. And that's the fascinating thing here, is that they're interpreting this as showing that there is liquid water present within the deep igneous rocks of the planet, similar to what we find here on Earth. Okay, so let's break it down a little bit more, because my first question as a non-scientist is, when you have the probe that is measuring at one spot, do we actually know or understand how far that water spreads. Do we understand or believe it to be across the entire planet underneath the surface or in certain parts? Do we know? Well, it's certainly large volumes, similar to what we saw a couple of days ago when the quake hit Los Angeles. Geophysics has well-developed models to take a look at seismic data, seismic waves that come back having traveled through large quantities of the planet and are able to interpret that, as I've said, in the context of what kind of material those waves have gone through. So although InSight was only in one place, certainly the information that they've been able to determine allows them to see that this is, to infer that this is an extensive phenomenon. And it's a huge change in our thinking about water on the planet Mars. Uh, up until this point, it's been hoped for and thought that there might be liquid water, but really this is the first data-based models that have shown us evidence that this liquid water might in fact exist. Okay, so I want to get to what this means in a moment, but how deep would the water be? Do we know? In this case, they're inferring something on the order of 10 kilometers and deeper. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Well, I mean, in science, we don't really tend to judge. It's an enormously <laughs> exciting thing. Um, essentially, here back on Earth, we went through a similar eureka moment about 10 years ago. In particular, the understanding of how deep water can be, even on Earth, was a bit of a mystery. And about 10 years ago, we were actually able to show right here in Canada in studies on the Canadian Shield near Timmins, Ontario, that even at two, three, four kilometers depth, our planet has water in the nooks and crannies, in the pores and fractures of igneous rock. And so that already transformed our thinking about the water cycle on Earth, something we began to call the hidden hydrogeosphere. And so it's fascinating that they've been able to find it on Mars. Now, on Mars, of course, they're estimating it may be considerably deeper. It may be 10 kilometers deep. But it's still fascinating because there are means by which deep water can interconnect with the surface. And particularly on a planet like Mars that has much higher porosity than Earth, there's always the possibility that although it's found 10 kilometers deep, there may be different ways that that can be interrogated, investigated. And as we've seen with InSight, using geophysics and other measurements, there are ways to understand the subsurface, even if we cannot drill, and obviously we can't, 10 kilometers down. Okay, so guide us through what this actually means for the possibilities of exploration or further exploration on Mars. Well, the fascinating thing is, Mars, we sometimes call it Earth's evil twin, back around the time that life arose on our planet, maybe around 4 billion years ago. Mars, like Earth, had a very nice climate. It had an atmosphere. It was warmer and wetter. And we know from all the work that's been done by Mars scientists from orbit and from uh, rovers that it had liquid water. But around 3 billion years, everything changed on Mars. And it evolved into what is now a cold, dry desert a very, very thin atmosphere and no ability for water to survive on the surface. So the question has been, what happened to the water? Much was lost to space. Some is found frozen on the surface. But there was always a feeling that a lot of it would have to be in the subsurface. But a big question was, how deep and in what form? Would it only be found frozen as ice? Or could liquid water be found? 
And the reason that's so important is, as we understand the origin of life and the search for life in the universe, there's a strong knowledge that life needs liquid to survive. And then specifically, life on Earth needs liquid water. So the presence of liquid water is the first clue about whether or not a planet might in fact be inhabited or habitable. All right, Barbara Sherwood Lawler, I've got to leave it there. I, I, we'll leave it on that up note, right? Uh, whether or not life can be inhabitable uh, or whether people can actually go to Mars and live there someday. Maybe not us, but someday. <laughs> Barbara, thanks for your time. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you.